You know, like, you love football. You yeah, watch football. Yeah, the, the commissioner could literally punt a baby across his <laughs> office. <laughs> I'm still gonna watch on Sunday. Well, thanks so much for being here. I love this show. You're oh, one of my favorite you. comedians. I'm excited to talk to you. Well, I'm excited to be here. These chairs are horrific. <laughs> this is like, this is designed for like, I don't know what age. It's not like six to eight. Like when you're 11, this is like the perfect size. It's not quite adult size, it's not kid size. I already slouch. It's gonna I be a slouch. bad interview, dude, and I'm blaming the chair. You get it, you know, it's fun. You get on stage, you talk about topics that are kind of taboo, but you make them really, really funny. So your Christian background is, is part of the, the show. Or yes, least and two I wanted episodes. to talk to you about Jesus after this. Well, I, <laughs> not, the only reason why I bring it up is some people thought maybe you went a little too far. I don't even know what, you, I mean, we did maybe two jokes was, about that. Yeah, exactly. Don't you think the Catholic Church went a little too far? <laughs> More so than my cartoon. All right, listen. A couple of jokes. I know this is a morning show. You can't bring up all those crimes. You know what? Technically, well, they, just, they just sort of kept moving them around. You know, like those killer whales at SeaWorld? After it kills a trainer, they'll then move it up to Seattle. They don't give them their background. All right, I'm not totally following, <laughs> but uh, I don't think I want to. You know what I'm to. talking about. It's a morning show. I understand. Like, hey, thank you. So what's up with all these white kids now walking around trying to act like they're like gangster rappers? It's irritating. It's like everywhere I go, man, I figure I'd just be here in the city where you got a good mix of people. You know, I'll be like in the middle of Kansas, though. Like the whitest state ever. There'll be some howdy doody looking white kid like me. You know, I'm thinking this is one of my peeps. Somebody I can have a conversation with. All of a sudden, he's just like, yo, what's up, kid? What's up, kid? I just want to be like, nothing much, Brad. You know, you keeping it real in Wichita? How the fuck are you going to be a gangster in a state, say, like Nebraska? You know, what do you be like, all hardcore about your crop? Just in there, yo, shit was crazy, you know what I'm saying? My fucking corn was rolling, my fucking scarecrow was tipping over and shit, you know what I'm saying, son? I just want to be like, dude, you're white. Go to the Gap, give in to it. Buy some Dockers and come home. They're picked. Now, I'm guessing they're gonna pick Madonna and finish off the job Kabbalah started. Yes, well, Rob, she was born and raised Catholic. Then she became a whore. But over the last decade, she has studied the Kabbalah. I love this dude texting for the entire interview. It's just, <laughs> it's just trying to keep the attentions on millennials. It's like impossible. Look at him. He's already got the chains. He's probably got his own record label. He's like making <laughs> deals as we speak. He's got championship rings on. I don't know what you're doing, dude, but I want your life, man. You're crushing it. So are you in the process? I cannot get comfortable in this fucking chair. This is just like one of the worst things. This should be like in a museum is like the prototype. This is what, <laughs> this was the awful level of comfort. We went from a log to this, and then eventually they got cushions. And out of the house. You want people to walk down the street with a mask on? Let's not start this, John. Do you, though? Let's not start this. Okay. Let's, let's start it. I, I don't want to start this bullshit. I'm not going to sit here with no medical degree, listening to you with no medical degree, with an American flag behind you, smoking a cigar, <laughs> acting like we know what's up better than the CDC. All I do is I listen. I watch the news once every two weeks. I'm like, eh, eh, mask or no mask? Still mask? All right, mask. That's all I give a fuck about. I don't care. But even they say you shouldn't wear a mask unless you're treating a coronavirus patient. The World Health Organization. Yeah, but they didn't say that, that initially. They didn't say it initially. No, they didn't. They did. And then it gradually, then it gradually, and then, wait, wait, wait. And then everybody wore the fucking masks. This is like rollerblading. Everybody fucking rollerbladed. And then there was that one fucking homophobic joke. And then everybody acted like they never did it. <laughs> and then a, a hundred million fucking rollerblades got thrown into the fucking ocean. We all wore masks. And I then all of a sudden, people are fucking sitting there. What? You don't have the body type for it, dude. <laughs> Your fucking knuckles would scrape on the ground. <laughs> Even with that extra two inches. <laughs> I just love how wearing a mask became like this fucking like soft thing that you were doing. Like yeah, being courteous. Bitches. Being courteous. Why is it for bitches? It I know it's so stupid. You're wearing a mask. <laughs> First of all, it's Oh, not. God, you're so tough with your fucking open nose and throat. <laughs> Chicho, and your five o'clock shadow. This is a man right here. A uh, man doesn't wear a mask. Hey, Bill. Hey, how are you? Thank you for having me. I'm really glad Hello, that Dallas you're here. Area. Yes, Dallas is so happy to have you. You were just telling me you're from Massachusetts, is that right? Yes, I Massachusetts, am. Massachusetts, and now you're living in L.A. Yes, I am. So I'm glad that you're here in Texas for the brief time that the weather's going to be 70 degrees. Oh, it's perfect. This is like the golden age of uh, global warming. <laughs> Right before the polar ice caps melt and we all drown. You got to enjoy these 70 degree uh, January days. They're awesome. Enjoy them while you can get them. That's right. You know, I was reading a little bit about you and it says that you have a tendency to kind of go with your first thought. Yeah. Because reading makes you sleepy. That's right. And my first <laughs> thought is this is the best week to be here the week before the Super Bowl. That is so true. Before all the whores fly in. Uh-huh. You know? Yeah. 
Oh, just want to get out. Wow. <laughs> just want to get out of here before that. What well, is true? This is like the Oscars uh, for oh. prostitutes. Okay, all right. This well, entire week. Let's remember we're G rated here, folks. <laughs> all right, so we're going to go back to a safer subject because, as okay. you know, I'm sorry, I as didn't, you I didn't know, realize. this is. Uh, Bill, you're, are you the head writer on the show, or how do you how do you work in the writers' room on the show? Because you write your stand-up specials, you know, obviously you're a writer, but you've never really written on a sitcom before. If you go through your credits, you hadn't really been on a show before. Why'd you have to bring that up? <laughs> Just right out of the gate, he goes negative. <laughs> Never really saw you write on anything before, Bill. Um, <laughs> there was all these other th nice things on your IMDb page I could have brought up, but I noticed this one glaring thing that you've never done, and right out of the gate. Was it because I made fun of the, the chairs? I'm sorry. I think I hate like 90% of the movies that are coming out right now. You know what movies really irritate me? I hate the black guy, white guy buddy movies. You know what I mean? Because they're always going to make the white guy out to be like this complete nerd, like, oh, jeez. I can't understand the slang. Slow down, black guy. Then they always have the black guy's got to be like this over the top, like ridiculous. Come on, man, you got to loosen up. Like teaches the white dude how to like party or something. That shit never happens in real life. You know, like when I hang out with the black guy in real life, at no point does he like try to like teach me how to dance. And I don't go to his neighborhood and like try to save a school. It just doesn't happen. We kind of hang out, have a good time, whatever. And at the end of the night, you know, we get on the subway, and I get off at about 15 stops before him. It's not your fault that I'm a psycho, right? You're a wonderful person. If I wasn't a, a maniac, I would, I would have, I would have been in the real world like you, helping people. Instead, <laughs> up here pathetically screaming, "Look at me! Look at me!" every goddamn night. <laughs> well, watch out, Cheryl. Sure, talk about it. What do you want to know about it? You want to know what it's like to sit in a red roof inn in the middle of fucking Nebraska? <laughs> huh? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Whenever an American goes to book a vacation, they go, hey, fuck Florida. Fuck Hawaii. Let's go to Nebraska. And you know what? Guess what we're saying, sweetie? The red roof inn. Right across from the Denny's. And I understand why people have guns. I really do. Because you are on your own when you're out there, okay? 78 fucking miles between the next driveway. Rural road, 17. They don't even have fucking names for the streets out there. They become dirt roads, little house and prairie. The cast comes rolling by, whatever the fuck they drive out there. Yeah, one of the loneliest moments of my life. It's another guy looking at his phone. I swear to God. Through the day Jesus comes back, if he ever does, if he's even a real person, like 90% of people are going to miss it. They're going to walk right. He's going to be walking on water, and they're immediately walking by him. They're not even going to see it. Oh, yeah, and there's a drop-off in fame for Jesus at that point. Everyone was, everyone was paying attention. Now no one gives a shit. Oh, there we go. No, but now this is like the ego one. Now I'm going to be sitting above you. Yeah, you no, got to come man. with two. It's fine. It's fine. Sir, the one, we'll the one comedy through line that's working here is me shitting on this chair. Why would you take that from me? This is, you're just totally going against the grain. I understand it. But you got on camera, so I think you get paid, even though this is online. <laughs> <laughs> so much, yeah. I don't know, dude. The internet's too fucking weird to give out all that information. Oh, you don't uh, even want to say really? how many because you're afraid that it will yeah, somehow compromise means, your privacy. Yeah, by all talking about it. Is there anybody you can cut this out? I'm honest, dude. Like, Seriously? Yeah, no, dude. I, yeah, there's fucking lunatics out there. Okay. Well, Off the air. Off the air, I'll tell you. <laughs> all right. Jeez. <laughs> I love how surprised he is. Jeez, well, you actually, can mention the amount. Absolutely, absolutely <laughs> crazy people. Well, okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I don't know why that took out so <laughs> flat. When did you start shaving your head? It looks good. Uh, when did I start shaving my head? I shaved it. I had my first, my first special. I had it shaved. Really? I didn't... Yeah. When I saw you in New York well, for glad, the Patrice I'm glad thing. you liked it. I, I see I you like losing the roof there in the back. Yeah, You'll be right bit, there with me. We'll do, we'll do a buddy cop okay. show. Exactly. All right, two <laughs> balding old guys. Exactly. Going after some hairy criminal. Where did you play the cop? On uh, Breaking Bad. Breaking like Bad. Things. I wasn't Breaking a cop Bad. in Breaking Bad. 
and I had my head shaved on my first special. You didn't do your research. You were Where? so busy worried about this match and this, and now Where look at you. you. A cop? Huh? What You're show were you to a cop? Sweat on? on your upper I know, lip. Because I'm nervous. Because I'm fucking this up. Can women be funny? Will you guys just fucking grow up and just sit down and write your own horse shit and come up with it? Start your own fucking show. Have your own award show. Quit waiting around for other people to do shit for you. That's the fucking problem. If you guys had your own big club and I was standing outside of it, you'd never fucking let me in. I'd start my own shit. You guys got to start your own shit. You got brains in there, right? Uh, I, yes, absolutely. So write your own shit and quit your fucking whining. We're all eating a giant shit sandwich out here. Nobody cares. I don't care. Absolutely, but I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a web person. The fuck up. Uh, I, it has no makes no yeah. difference whether you got a dick or a twat. All right, <laughs> just do what the fuck you want to do, and hopefully people respond to it. But this fucking horseshit of quotas and all of this crap you become undeniable. Well, when was the last time you went on stage and you killed so hard the person after you bombed? If you're fucking doing that on a regular basis, people are going to notice regardless of what you have between your legs. There are some very famous cereal box icons. Yes, and are. I want you to be able to look at some of these characters and see if you can determine which cereal it's associated with. If you get it okay. right, you'll hear this. If oh. you get it wrong, you'll hear this. Oh, jeez. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's look at our first one. You're going to see the monitor down here. Let's look at our first one. Here. Okay. Oh, it's behind us. Sorry about that. Oh, it's behind us. Yes. Who's that? That's What's he my with? uncle. No, it's not. Although you do resemble him. <laughs> I mean, Who I is that? To... That is uh, for redheads. That is a racist uh, <laughs> symbol right there. That's like the uh, the, the, the the Quaker mix guy. No, it's no that's not the, the uh, Lucky Charms. Bam, look at that. Good for you. Okay, next. I thought next. I didn't drink last night. Yeah, right. Next, let's see. Who okay, who's that? All right, this guy. Can you see him? Yeah, that's the, uh, oh, that's one of the founding fathers. <laughs> who said that all men are created equal as long as they're white. <laughs> right? Isn't that what it is? One of those guys? No, no? it's not. It's Wasn't the Quaker the, the, Oats man. Ah, I thought all that right? was the and we uh, have, think, bicentennial Fruit Loops guy. No, it's not. It's the, but speaking of that, let's see. Do we have another one or is that it? Oh. oh, oh! that is uh, Johnny Mathis. <laughs> <laughs> you got oh, one on. question to ask Don Rickles. Uh, who killed Kennedy? <laughs> <laughs> you think he knows? Well, yeah, well, he hung out with Sinatra. I think uh, <laughs> six degrees of separation, he probably knows. Yeah, why not? Where's well, Jimmy Hoffa? I'd ask him one of those. You know, you know, he, you yeah. ask him three mob questions. One of them, he's got the answer to. Yeah. At some point, I was going to make a point here. That's why I keep looking at here, and I just realize I'm blocking myself out of the camera. I love that you have the jib camera for this, like it's an action movie. Let's <laughs> let's let's swoop in at these two guys sitting in these unbelievably small chairs. I literally feel like I'm going to fall onto the floor. This is insane. You really went all out with the audience, though. They got full-size adult chairs. <laughs> Are these like from the 20s before they had like horse tranquilizers in our food when everybody was like five foot one? I never understood people who join the military. And that's such a horrible job. It's like the second you get there, some dude gets right in your face like, get off that goddamn bus, you piece of shit. I mean, what other job is like that? You don't get a job at a computer company and the guy's like, get in that damn cubicle, you fucking piece of shit. Turn on that laptop, don't you eyeball me, private? You're in there doing push-ups. I want to build websites, sir. I just think you have to be a complete idiot and a psycho to want to be in the military. I've never understood the shame of getting a hooker. People always flip out like, dude, you had to pay for it? It's just like, buddy, I paid for this shirt. What would you rather pay for, a shirt or a blowjob? You know what I mean? It's a no-brainer. I'm gonna tell you right now, man, the only thing that stops me is sexually transmitted diseases. If it wasn't for like herpes and AIDS and shit like that, I'd be ordering hookers like Domino's. This is Southside Steve, and this is Southside Steve TV, and this is Bill Burr. That's your question? I'm just saying who you are. Oh, yeah, all right. I don't like you creep me out with that big microphone and that country western shirt. Oh, no, this isn't country western. It's like it's hip now to oh, wear okay. this. This is my nightclub look. Yeah, okay. come on. All right. <laughs> You're, you're uh, what is this, Rock 100.5? Mm -hmm. This is the worst interview I've ever done. And he's wearing Stetson cologne or something. It's just really over <laughs> overpowering. How you doing? You know what he looks like? He looks like the first guy who gets his ass kicked in a Steven Seagal movie. You don't have any kids. 
No, I don't. And I don't like the way you said that. Like, said very, <laughs> you don't have any kids. No, I don't have any kids. I'm going to adopt. <laughs> That's nice. I'm going to rescue a couple of the children that work till four in the morning <laughs> to put this. They make them catch it when it rains. <laughs> okay? And you have to stand out there <laughs> and, until it's full. And if it doesn't rain that day, you actually get beaten. And they dock your pay because you didn't do the rain dance right. And then we sit here and we drink this shit. And we wonder why China hates us. I was in the middle of Kansas, actually. Oh, good, I'm coming from here. Uh, I can't believe you're making fun of it. No, I was in a Denny's. I walked into a Denny's. And I wasn't making any money, right? So I was trying, I had, I had a gig at 11 o'clock at night, so I checked out of my hotel and I was trying to stay up because I had an early flight trying to save some money so I wouldn't have to pay for a hotel. And I walked into this Denny's at like 2 in the morning for a 6 o'clock flight, and I come walking in, there's like one waiter, and there's like me and two other truckers kind of spread out. And I'm just sitting there, I ordered, and I'm just sitting there, it's deathly quiet like it isn't here right now. <laughs> And I'm really thinking. I was like 10, 11 years in the business going, what the fuck did I do? I should be, should be married with a couple of kids running a hardware store. What did I do with my life? And I remember in the background, Paul McCartney and Wings, that song came on. All of a sudden, this stupid song came on. You know the song, like, somebody knocking on my door. Somebody ringing the bell. I opened the door, and right as I did that, I looked up, and me and the trucker's eyes met. It was the most pathetic moment. I'm just like, we just really looked at each other like, can you fucking believe this shit? It's a silent moment between us, and then we just we're, we're both went back to our fucking sausage links. And that's what being a stand-up comedian is. It's not that whole. HBO was like one night, and then you just write back in the sticks. Huh? Performing on Football Sunday. A poor excuse for a blizzard in front of a bunch of nurses. This is very nice. What's that? You know what's the worst is when somebody has a kid like a year or two older and then they just start going like, oh, I'm telling you what's going to happen. I'm going to tell you in, in a month from now. Enjoy this period. And they try to bring all this anxiety. That's a big thing parents do. They try to bring anxiety. Of, on like what's going to happen and all that. So now when people do that, I just say to them, this is my line, I go, you sound like a terrible father and I think you married the wrong person. <laughs> it's like, no, it's like that's what you got out of it. This the most amazing thing is like, oh, you can't drink anymore. You can't go out partying, which you totally can. I don't recommend it, but you really can do whatever you, you can do blow right in front of your kid. I mean, what is it? It's a baby. It doesn't know what cocaine is. And even if it did, his hands are too small to use the phone to rat you out, so. <laughs> as long as you don't teach the kid how to use the phone, you ought to be able to do blow for his whole, <laughs> for his whole like, first eight years of his life. So he figures out how to open up a window and get out the world. He's a horrible person. He snorts all the sugar. He won't, let, he won't let me pick up things. This is the only way you can be comfortable in these fucking chairs. This is like in the middle of my back. Oh my God, I love you, but I hate this set. <laughs> <laughs> this is the lowest budget shit. You know what it is? It's the rent. It's the fucking rent. You did all this stuff. You should get rid of that camera and get some chairs. What, what kind of chair would you prefer? Comfortable, adult-sized <laughs> chair. No, I have bad posture. That's what it is. So do I. By the way, dude, the elk's been delicious. Thank you. How you like it? I made this American chop suey with it, and my wife gave a fucking bad review before anybody even tasted it, and everybody just said, fuck it. Like, she goes, it looks like hamburger helper. I've been chowing it for like four days. Like, out of respect for that fucking elk that you shot. It's like, I'm eating all this shit. I don't care if it's fucking bad. Does it make you more aggressive? What? Elk. <laughs> no, Joe, you fucking <laughs> lunatic. <laughs> 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 Somebody gets in my face that might cause me to get more l lunatic. I eat a little bit of protein. You had to beat the fuck out of people for like three decades before you could like chill, smoke a little weed, put on your little rascal's hat and just fucking chill out. You don't understand. I love him to death. But this guy is the most testosterone fucking filled dude I've ever met. That's why I love him. I love him. 
He's like every guy I met in Boston fucking welded together. He's crazy. The little Yet rascal's he... hat will haunt me for the rest of my life. <laughs> no, and this is like killing me. No, well, I'll never no, put this on. No, house Joe, house you're house crushing that. Milk. He's crushing that hat. Come on, you I know who he is. You're killing it. I love it. You're, I love it. You don't have to balance it out. I like it. It's hilarious. I'm laughing at me too. I'll never put this thing on again. I'm no, gonna, you shouldn't, dude. I'm gonna stick it in the fireplace. You shouldn't, dude. You're, you're killing it. Doll. We'll you're keep it on it. for when the papers come out in the morning. Extra, extra. Read all about it. <laughs> Donald, Donald Trump, Trump wins, wins, it wins in Alaska. Shoku Charlie it's finally Trump. builds a fucking bed. I'm a huge fan of hockey. I love it, and I love that people don't get it down in the states i love it i love it. why do they make why do they let them fight i can't see the puck it's like music to my ears it's like good yeah get out of here do you, just get out of here let me let me let me watch it in it's, peace do you remember when they lit up the puck for a few years on, on tv News, yeah that was you guys do you know no but the but the nhl well no no wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute time out now, time well. out time out the NHL is you guys too, so all the owners had to agree with that, and you all had to be like, "We gotta, we gotta like expand this thing." We thought we'd funnel money into Canada and keep it here, but you guys took it over, like you tend to do. But well, I'm not going to apologize no, for that. No, no, no. You're big on the yeah. I mean, that's just business, dude. You're acting like we came and knocked you on the head. You know what we're about? I yeah. We wait. Wait a minute. Oh yeah. Wait a second, <laughs> fellow white person, <laughs> not native to this country? How did you guys get this up here? Did the Native Americans go, oh, well, we like these white guys. You can have all that land. <laughs> Jesus Christ. No, I, oh, I get it. Your shit smells like maple syrup up here. <laughs> know what you're telling me? All right. Yeah. I'll go with it. No, that's what kills me about Obama. All the stuff they're showing him, like he's this hero. You know what I mean? Every like picture of him now, he's always like kayaking. You know? <laughs> Looks like an erectile dysfunction ad. You know, like this guy didn't do, like he didn't do all these drone bombings. Like, were those terrorists? Were they playing hacky sack? I don't know. You want some soft shell crab? You know, like he wasn't part of that? Sorry, so this is why I don't, I don't talk politics, because I'm into conspiracy theory, man. Are you really? I'm into it, yeah. How deep, Alex Jones deep, or? I think that whoever runs this is a robot and didn't like map out what human beings are shaped like, which is why they, they sort of had an idea of what chairs were. And that's what the, <laughs> so this, this show is making me paranoid. Yes. Conspiracy theory has gotten a bad name where now it's, it's, it's become synonymous with like moronic thought. Like if you're into conspiracy theory, if you think like the bankers need to be stopped, then you also think the moon is made out of cheese. <laughs> and you think that there's shape shift shifters and like lizard people. You know, they just try to knock it down. It's like this country started with a conspiracy. That's how it came. We won, <laughs> so they're considered heroes and rebels, you yeah. know, uh, whatever, what re revolutionaries, but yeah. if they lost, they would be hanged for, conspi for yeah. conspiring. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's not like it spontaneously happened. Yeah. Like all of a sudden, everybody just picked up a gun and started shooting at the British. You know, they sat around. <laughs> they, said they planned they it out. They planned it out. Yeah. I'm kind of getting tired of these people. What are you <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, when you said we when I'm like, did we really win? But I understand what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. Now, oh, is that that African American thing? Yeah. <laughs> said I got punched in the head by the person I'm in a relationship with and her response was what did you do right that's the same thing somebody says they got raped and someone goes well what were you wearing it's just hilarious in a mixed crowd when you have the other sex to relate to it but when it's a nurse full of a room full I can't even talk a room full of fucking nurses it doesn't work it's just like an improv punishing me is that what this is Sold out a bunch of shows. He thinks he's big shit. I will fix him. <laughs> we ain't even having fun all week. <laughs> How are we doing here for time? My girlfriend went to a strip club the other night, which I don't have a problem with. I mean, she's dating me. I know she's got to look at something to give her something to think about, right? But the only problem I had was she came home. She told me she touched one of the strippers' dicks. Can you believe that, ma'am? She said she touched it, so I go, what do you mean you touched it? What, you, 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 you went like that? Ooh, ooh, what is that? She's like, no, I kind of I kind of went like that. So I was like, well, what the fuck? You didn't touch it, you stroked it. So I'm getting this big argument about what a stroke is. She goes, no, a stroke is down and then back up again. I go, yeah, but that was a stripper's dick. It's twice as big as mine, so once down is equal to down and then back up again. She tried to act like she didn't enjoy it, but it was a great big stripper cock, and I know she loved it.
She definitely loved it. <laughs> One time uh, I was in uh, Rome, right? One day with my wife and we went to the Vatican to go take the tour of the Sistine Chapel. Yeah. So there's a way to, I don't know, we went through the whole fucking thing and we're just sitting there and we come in and we're looking at it, whatever, and we're standing in the line. It took for fucking ever. So I say to my wife, I was going, you know, if I lived here, I'd open a bar across the street called the 17 Chapel. <laughs> she goes, what? I go, the 17 Chapel. She goes, what? I don't know, Six, 16 Chapel? <laughs> 17 Chapel. It's like having the 19th hole. Oh my God. Bar thing. And she just, she looked at me. Oh my like, God. Like, oh my God, I'm breeding with this. Oh and she my goes, God. Bill, <laughs> it's the 17th Chapel. <laughs> it's the 16th Chapel. <laughs> And then all I can say, I just, all I can say was just, I just go, no, it isn't. <laughs> and, then, and then it was funny. Then I walked in, I walked in, and I looked up, and I, I didn't even like it. It's not even that big. It's like, it's like the size of the side of this fucking thing. He milked it. It should have taken way less time. I'm telling you, they're paying him by the fucking hour. And I'm going to park all the 17. No, I have a lot of those. I have a lot. Oh, Jesus, don't die on us, man. I can imagine you're, the room before it, you're like 15 and 16. <laughs> I, was, I, was a, I thought it was the 16 chapel. And they say, being a mother is the hardest job out Most there. difficult job Most on difficult. the Oprah said that. Oprah said that, yeah. Has, yeah. That, has your opinion on that, on that phrase, changed at all since, since no. you've had a kid? <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. It's not the most difficult job on the planet. It just isn't. Dude, I did roofing in July. I almost, as a redhead, I almost died. There's people, there's people that work on like oil. What was that movie that guy made? The oil, the, the fucking, you know, they there drill will be blood. oil. What is it? There will be blood. With Not the... there will be blood. The, uh, out in the ocean, they would drill. I can never remember the names. Deepwater. Mark Wahlberg yeah, was Deepwater there. Deepwater Horizon, yeah. yeah, yeah. Those guys were working on, on an oil rig. The fucking thing blows up. <laughs> They're on fire. They gotta jump into water that's on fire. <laughs> Salty water into their wounds. You gotta swim out of that oil and fire and then tread water. Praying to God that the Coast Guard is gonna get there before the sharks do. <laughs> now talk to me about a toddler. Oh, he was so fussy today. I just, he wouldn't eat his peas. You know, it was another look at good me. one. My, you know what the best me. ones? Like all, all, most of my friends, we all got busted for drinking and driving. The best one was a buddy of mine. Uh, they read his, it was like, you know, practically four in the morning, we noticed a maroon VW Fox blowing its horn, trying to pass on the right. We pulled the defendant over. Uh, after repeatedly asking the defendant to stay in the car, he got out of the car, threw his keys at my feet, and uh, repeatedly stated, lock me up, I'm fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> and this was funny was my buddy was a good looking guy and the the judge was a was a woman and when the guy read that you know lock me up i'm fucked up and he wasn't the brightest guy and he just kind of he went like Ugh. he's like put his head down like that and he was you know little pound puppy fucking looking dude and uh she uh she she gave him like a lighter sentence and because he was good looking i think so yeah, I mean that all plays in. It could. That's why ugly people are complaining so much. <laughs> like they they won't take the time to develop a fucking personality, write some jokes, <clears throat> do what the rest of us have to do. Like I don't get mad at Brad Pitt. You know, how come he fucking cuz he's fucking beautiful. I'm a fucking bald red-headed male. I know where I am in the pecking order. And some of these fucking people who are complaining right now who are mad that beautiful people get treated differently. I understand racially speaking, but you're not going to do the beautiful thing. And then, then that's another thing they try to say. Well, society tries to, you know, they're the ones that fucking, did, like, you know, like I love when like there's a supermodel, like this is like an impossible standard of beauty to try and live up to. Yeah. 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 That's why she's on the cover of a magazine. She's that level beautiful. And you're going to try and sit there and tell me that that was learned. Well, here's the thing. That's only women. Because when you see Jason Momoa playing Aquaman, you don't hear men saying that's an impossible standard of beauty that we have to No, I just make fun of that fucking stupid thing trident. he has to hang on to. <laughs> <laughs> 
I don't what? care how much you can kick my ass. That is the <laughs> dumbest shit. You should be on a fucking cereal box. It's a for, trident. For years, they had a problem like with Aquaman. It's like he's in the ocean. Human beings are on Earth. Like, what do we? Like, I have to see that fucking movie. To, what are they going to be? Is it going to be like Japanese people, like finning? He's is he going to save Sharp? He goes underwater. Is that his skin? Like, well, the bumps? What is that? Is that a suit? Doesn't water get in the gloves? <laughs> you, you think that that have to be all one piece, right? Yeah, you that would be think. annoying as shit. Is it any worse look, than water in your gloves? Well, look, it looks like it catches them, like a water catcher. Like not just like water gets in the gloves. It's like a funnel. He looks like a stripper at a bachelorette party. He does <laughs> a good one. Like you paid money, you got a good one. Guy dieted down for that. Uh, yeah, James Comey, the former director of the FBI. I just know he's six eight, which was hilarious. Mungus. I just pictured him in the police academy, like when he had to go over that giant wall, him just like stepping over it. <laughs> and he had to buy like one of those custom sweatshirts. Like huge legs. <laughs> yeah, at some point, aren't you too tall to be a cop? You can't be using me on undercover. Just his whole head sticking out of the car. <laughs> What's with that seven foot guy over there who keeps following us around? I'm starting to feel like. Uh, <laughs> you can't blend in at 6'8, right? I really don't trust beautiful women. You know why? Because they're only around when you have shit. It's like the second you get some, if you don't have anything going on, you're just like hanging out with trolls and shit. You know what I mean? But the second you get some shit going on, they come out of the woodwork like, oh my God, you have some stuff. Can you buy me some stuff? And then the second you go broke, they're like, oh my God, I left something over here. You know, it's just a real fucking turnoff. Ah.